Ever wondered how you can monitor your OPN Sense or PF Sense installations at scale? Today I'm going to show you exactly how to do it with help of Zabbix, the open source monitoring tool. If you like our work or you found this video helpful, please consider following us on LBRY, link in the description. Thank you and let's get on with the video. So here I have my temporary Zabbix installation. This is the latest version of Zabbix 4.4. Before I dive into actual tutorial, I wanted to share a bit of theoretical info beforehand. So Zabbix can perform two types of checks on the remote agents. And yes, you'll have to install a Zabbix agent on your OPN Sans firewall and PF Sans firewall. Although you can use SNMP, it's not as effective and robust as Zabbix agent is. So as I was saying, Zabbix can perform two types of checks. The passive checks, which will require open TCP port of 10050, and Zabbix agent will basically listen on that port for the incoming connections. So in case of the passive check, all of the queries will be generated on the Zabbix server and then pushed through to the client, wait for the response and received all data back. In case of an active check, you don't have to open anything on the firewall side, but you will need an open TCP port of 10051 on the Zabbix server side. And then in that case, firewall will ask for a list of active checks from a Zabbix server. This is a very basic explanation on how passive and active checks work. And if you want to know more, go to zabbix.com and check out their documentation. They have really nice and structured docs. All right, now we are back at the Zabbix dashboard. And you are probably thinking, before you show me how to configure it, what can we actually gain from adding all of our firewalls to this monitoring tool. Now let's go inside of one of the firewalls and check what kind of information Zabbix is collecting from the agent. Click on a firewall, then latest data. I wanna remove the details. Let me make this a bit bigger. Immediately you see the CPU usage, the disk usage, system uptime, available RAM, then the host name, Zabbix agent version, and now in my opinion, the most useful section for the firewall monitoring, the network interfaces. Zabbix will automatically discover all of the network interfaces on your firewall and will throw them up here. You will be able to see the incoming network traffic and the outgoing network traffic. And for example, if you had a backup yesterday that failed, Maybe you want to jump into the interface and just check what was the network activity on this particular interface yesterday. Here you can see the green line. It means that interface was up and there wasn't much traffic, only four kilobytes a second. And there was a spike of eight kilobytes. But before that, we have nothing. It means that either connection was lost or device was offline. So from that, you can make a conclusion that it wasn't your backup system that failed, it was actually the network. Now, with a quite a bit of intro, let me actually show you how to add your OPN Sense and PF Sense firewalls to the Zabbix monitoring system. First of all, we have to install the Zabbix agent on both systems. On OPN Sense, go to System, Firmware, Plugins. I already have the Zabbix agent installed on here, but naturally just scroll down, find it in the list of packages and click install. It's very similar on PFSense, go to system, package manager, available packages, search for Zabbix and just install it from list of packages. PFSense is a little bit more advanced on this topic so they add multiple versions of Zabbix agent to the system. And you will have to choose the appropriate one from the list. For example, if you use Zabbix server version three, then you'll have to install Zabbix agent three, which you can see is located right here. As per configuration on OPN Sans, go to services, Zabbix agent and settings. In the main settings section, enable the service, 
type in the desired FQDN, listen port will be 10050. Listen IPs will be the IP address or IP addresses of the interfaces you want to listen on for incoming connections for Zabbix agent. Source IP will be the IP address you'll be sending the traffic from. In the Zabbix server field, you'll have to populate your Zabbix server IP address. This way, you will only be listening for the connections from this particular IP. And if someone else will want to pull the information off your firewall, agent will not accept the connection. Moving on to Zabbix features tab. Here is where we can set up the active checks. In my case, I cannot configure it because I'm running Zabbix inside Docker containers and I didn't configure the incoming ports. But if you want to activate Zabbix active checks, just enable the option here and specify your Zabbix server IP. Then click apply and restart the service. I'll remove the option because I don't have any active checks. I'll hit apply and I'll restart the agent. It really takes just a second so I can go back to my Zabbix web interface and add the host there. To add your firewall to the system, click configuration, hosts, create host, give it a name, assign a group to it, specify the IP address, go to templates, in the new template field, type in BSD and choose the free BSD option. On the older Zabbix server versions, you'll have to click the add link down here. Now go to inventory and click automatic. Scroll all the way down and hit add. That's pretty much all you have to do to add the host to your system. Now, as you can see, our two other firewalls have this green Zabbix logo but our new one doesn't. That's because our Zabbix server didn't figure out yet that there is a connectivity between Zabbix server and the agent. If at the end it will not be able to connect, this will become red. Another note is that if you are doing it on the VAN interface, you'll have to open up the port 10050 to allow the traffic to go in. On the OPN sense, go to firewall, rules, floating, and create a new floating rule. The action will be pass, then mark apply immediately on match, choose your interface, direction any, choose your IP version, protocol is TCP, source any, destination this firewall, from port 10050 to port 10050. That's of course if you left your Zabbix agent port at the default. Hit save, apply and you're good to go. Now on the PFSense to set up Zabbix agent, go to services, Zabbix agent, hit enable Zabbix agent service. And if you've been following this guide so far, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. You just populate the Zabbix server IP address. You can specify Zabbix server IP for active checks, then specify your host name, listen IP for this firewall, then listen port, and that's pretty much it. Hit save. And at this point, you have a perfectly working agent. If you want to allow Zabbix traffic in here, go to firewall, rules, then your VAN interface. If, of course, the connectivity is happening on the VAN side, add in a new rule. Action pass. Choose your interface and address family. Protocol is TCP. Source any. Destination this firewall. Destination port range 10050, 10050. Give it a description, hit save, apply, and you are good to go. Now just go back to your Zabbix server web interface and add the host in here. Now, as I told you before, Zabbix icon over here will become red only if Zabbix cannot perform any checks on the client. And if you hover over it, you will be able to actually see the error. Sometimes it may be connection timed out. Sometimes, as we can see here, interrupted system call. It means that nothing is listening on the other side. There is no Zabbix agent. And now I can clearly see why, because I have a wrong IP address. 
So if I go in and change it, it should turn our icon green. And after about a minute and a half, it turned out green. Now, before I finish this video, I wanted to show you another feature of Zabbix monitoring system. It is a trigger notification if anything goes wrong. I'll turn off both of these firewalls and let's see how quickly Zabbix will react to that. After less than a minute, our dashboard over here says that three machines are not available. But our problems dashboard is still not updated. Let's give it another minute. And finally, there it goes. After about two and a half minutes, it started to populate over here. Okay, now PFSense is also on the list. It took about another 40 seconds. And it took about another 10 plus seconds for our OPN Sense clone to populate. Now let's turn our firewalls back up and let's see what happens. Let me just move them away for now. After about 30 seconds, system hasn't yet realized that machines are up. Let's give it another minute. Okay, and the triggers, they start to disappear now. And there goes the last one. So if we go to configuration hosts, all of the firewalls are back. Another neat Zabbix feature is that it will actually tell you if one of your systems were recently restarted. I guess that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.